This printer is a leftover from the coffee shop project. As funny as it sounds, but my idiot co-owner dragged in a non-waterproof speaker, like this big, and then expected me to produce waterproofing. And so I bought the largest printer, which was then affordable, which is this unit by Tronxy, and built it up. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the building process only. I expect you to have access to the manual. And basically here, I'm only telling you additional tricks to make the whole building assembly go more smoothly. Running your own 3D printer is a very interesting job, but in many cases it can be cheaper to outsource the job. And PCBWay, which is a company which I've been using for quite a long time, now also offers a 3D printing service. And as you can see here, in principle, the process is very simple. You can just drag and drop an STL file and then the system will automatically calculate for you the prices. And yes, normally the prices are very, very reasonable and usually they ship within a day or two. So what we have here is the box, which is like a sportive 30 kilograms or so. And it was delivered from the Czech Republic. So let's cut into the little box and let's see just what the fine folks have sent us. And yes, as said, the unit came from the Czech Republic, so no trouble with customs or any other crap. And yes, here we see, in we go. And we have the first layer of cover. And we get a manual and lots and lots and lots of spare parts, which however are organized quite well. And so here we have our manual, which is going to be hopefully showing us how to assemble the unit. And here we have a little screw comparison card. That's very nice, which allows us to find out the different size of the screws. And yes, this is cut foam, looks quite impressive to me. So, Let's start with the next step. And one can see that Tronxy have been thinking because you see here we've got an A package, a C package. And while they don't use one package exactly for every type, you see here that it's usually two or three groups together which are easily to keep apart from one another. And yes, of course, in practice it's recommended to start making a few bowls as to make access a little bit easier into the individual screws. And yes, this actually has got two layers. So you see we removed the top layer <coughs> and now we are getting to the bottom layer where you've got these large aluminum rails and all this kind of stuff. So in short, it will be quite a sportive assembly until this box is cleared off of our desks. So. Now the next step is to put together this base frame here. Here I have one little criticism. They could have labeled these three with one, two, three. But on the other hand, if you are unsure, you can always take a tape measure because you see here, they give you very accurate dimensions. So you can keep the three apart by the length. And yes, now it's time to erect this thing here. Here, basically, only one thing is important. Here you see M6 threaded holes, which are missing at the bottom. And the orientation of these guys is very, very important. So, well, now it's time for the frame assembly. Important, the threaded rods are on the other side, over there. So here it's unthreaded. And here you want the wide snout. And then, basically, at this point, it's more or less just normal aluminium and of course you don't want to tighten it too much just yet because we still want to have a bit of frame for adjustment so you know you just give it a bit of a flip with the hand and then you have to of course do the same thing also on the other side which we are now not going to do on the screen
And here we already have the first problem. You see, here it fits in smooth, the screw into the hole, whereas here it doesn't. You have to turn it. And this is a problem because it would make the adjusting more difficult. And the solution is to take a file and to make this hole oh so little bit more open. Literally just a few tenths of a millimeter with a round file, which I'm going to do now. So here we go. You see one of these round guys and then you just dig around with it a little bit. Normally it's just a bit of deburring kind of work. And you see... Nope, we're still not quite there yet. So still a bit more. You don't want to overdo it because otherwise the construction loses rigidity. You only want to go just far enough that it fits in comfortably like so. When you've got this, you're basically there. So, now the next step are these guys, which slide into the rails. Interestingly, these boat nuts, which we have here, when you put them, you can put them in even after. But I made an interesting experience. The easiest way to assemble these is to make a little prefab. I'm going to show you this now. Basically, you need these. You need two of these washers. You have to find in the box and then you assemble these washers like so and you don't tighten it up you only do it a little bit so that it's like this on both sides you want this to remain flexible so it can swivel so like this a little bit and then we do the same thing on the bottom as you see here another one of those boat nuts and now you have this little prefab thing here and now the next step basically is you take this prefab and you need to swivel it into the position where it should sit a bit like this and then when you've got it basically you need to screw it together a little bit more and as you tighten it the nuts will lock in place a little bit more I'm gonna show this only partially now but they will eventually lock in place a little bit more and the construction becomes a bit more rigid. From my current point of view, I think this at the bottom will be the biggest weakness on the printer because there is no bolt at all coming from this side. But we are going to find out about this later. In the meantime, just be careful, this construction currently is not very rigid. And this up here I have to film with the free hand. You see these go on top here so that these stay free and very careful you see here these oblong holes they must be on the side of this free thing here and yes here on the top of course you have to make sure that you get the right side of the rail. And incidentally you see here all of these they've been fitting in without any problems. And now comes the next step. You see here we've got these parts which they call skateboard and you see here they are marked L for left and R for right. And here we see these long guide, guide rails and on the package they are also marked L and R. And this is something you must keep in mind. And now the next step we have are these guys here. They call them skateboards again. You see when it is not yet installed, you can just slide them onto the rail, which you then install. And there is one thing which is very important. You see here the small hole and over there, there are also small holes. They need to be on the same side and this side designates the front of the printer. 
So during assembly, I have my usual little sticker saying front here. And yes, now is the time to start to tighten everything down, a little bit at least. And now the next thing is this print head here, which you see it slides onto this rail. And then the rail mounts here on top with these holes. And you need to be very careful, first of all, of the constellation of the holes. The front is this way. And secondarily, this chain here, which you really don't want to damage. And at this point, we are asked for a drag chain plate. And this drag chain plate, you find it here inside of this bag, which contains the tools and interestingly also some of the electronic components. So now comes the point where this bag has to be broken down, even if you mainly use your own tools. And at this point we've reached a place where I made a mistake. Putting the printer on the table now is troublesome because it's difficult to assemble the parts on the top. So, what do we do now? We look for the parts bag, which has these guys. And at the bottom, there are four holes, one on each side. So basically, now is the time to install these feet. And then we have to move the printer to the ground. If we would have been intelligent, we would have done this before. But, well, you can't always win. You win some and you lose some. And this is an, one aspect of the design which I find badly documented. You see, we've got here this thing, here in the back the control computer, and here the extrusion head. And you see the cable turns around like this. And here the screwing, I haven't quite completely figured out how to do this the best way. And probably I will have a bit more on this in the end of the video. Either way, what is important, the screws go through here and they stick out in the end. The information in the manual at this point is wrong or outdated. And again, here we have the front, the left and the right. What is important here, here they say an M4 times 16 screw. But this M4 times 16 screw is not included in the packaging. So for now I'm using an M4 times 25 and I will replace it later. What is important is these two in the back actually do the fastening. And here we've got left and on the other side behind, as you see in a minute, we have got the motor. You see here, this is the motor marked Y and you see the motor is standing over the back like this. And the next step is installing the bolts. In principle, this happens like you would expect it. There is one interesting thing here with the cable ties, but that works surprisingly. And there is one interesting thing here. If you turn the Y motor, you see that the thing moves in both ways. This is new for somebody who like me, who so far only worked on Cartesian machines. You must understand, this is not a normal Cartesian machine, even so it looks like that. This is actually a core XY machine. And so the interplay between the X and the Y motors during the moving of the printhead is perfectly normal. And now we have the next step, which is these Z pulleys. There are multiple important things. Number one, this hole must point to the inside. Number two, here at the bottom, there has been a design change. Namely, as you see here, they now deliver the motor like this, like so. And the issue is with this motor, you see here at the bottom, you've got these weird things, but they don't quite fit the holes. So here you need to have two spare hex nuts or anything M4 for the bottom so that this doesn't go up anymore. The screws are included, you are just mixing, missing the hex nuts. 
And yes, there is one more thing here. Sometimes these screws are a bit too long, longer than the drill inside. And if this happens and it wiggles, then you need to put a few washers below at the bottom. You can just use any washer which you have in your lab. I just selected a bunch which I had flying around. And with these four washers under the screw, the situation is now perfect. And at this point, it is recommended to turn around the process a little bit against the manual and to first install these traverses. And what is important here, the two extra holes, they go to this side. So to the side where the power supply is. So at this point, you see the printer is completely assembled, but we are not yet ready to print because there is still a small modification you see here for the cable chain, which I insisted on doing to make the printer more robust. And how the actual bring up works, the slicer settings and all the other things, I will show you in a separate video, which appears here in a day or a week or something like that. In the meantime, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.